Hey there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Fulton. And welcome to episode 9 of the Flat World. Today it's not going to be anything really all that special. We're going to be doing a world tour today. This won't be very fancy or really all that edited that much. Because this, I think this is going to be more, you know, laid back video. You know, I think that's going to be a good idea. And, yeah. Raining on Day 1000. Isn't that, isn't that sweet? No, I'll turn on the shade just to make it nice. It's actually super sick, actually. This world just looks great with the uh, rain on, to be honest. But yes, we will be doing a world tour today. We're basically going to be going from everything from episode 1 that still exists to, uh, you know, episode, you know, 8. So, let's begin. We're going to be starting off here, actually. Now, in episode 1, I built my starter base. However, it no longer exists. It was destroyed back in episode 7. However, here, I made a basement for it. This uh, story, this is where pretty much I, I go here a lot because this is where my storage is. But in all honesty, sometime in uh, 2000 days, I need to make a, a new storage. This one's just... For some reason, I gave potatoes their own chest. And over here, this room I don't really go in as often, but this is my uh, smelting room. I also built this room here actually near the end of uh, episode 4, and I almost never go in here now. I made a dripstone farm here, but during the past like 700 days it's been running, it has per hardly produced at all of the two farms it has. I'm gonna need to make a new one in uh, 2000 days sometime. I say we uh, go in this area here first. So over here, it's actually, this used to be like a singular house, which I called Old Man Charlie's house, but I have no idea who that is. It's part of the old story for this world, which has been retconned basically entirely. Instead, it has been replaced with basically, uh, what would you call this? I guess apartments kind of, but I should guess it's like a motel. But it's a motel where you rent out the rooms basically permanently. Not, it's like a apartment motel, if that makes sense. Around this area, you also notice these modified dark oak trees. I've had something like this in mind for a while now, but I decided to do it near the end of uh, episode 8 because at that point I basically didn't really know what else to do. So I did this. Over here we have the string factory. This one of the most important builds in the entire world actually. It's a bit lagging here because of the shaders. You know, for reasons. But basically, this building is how I got all my money. I built it back in episode 3. And it actually used to look a lot different. There used to be a lot of glass and a lot of dirt still in there. That was all being removed and the interior of this place was uh, renovated in episode 7, I believe. Well, the exteriors remain pretty much the same. Over here is my iron farm in my de facto home base. Now, as to why I made it a big tall building, I have no idea. But it looked good on the thumbnail of episode 4, so. I made my iron farm in a pit because I figured that would make the iron golems actually spawn. To which, they did. It did. I had an effective iron farm, but however, if you're going to make an iron farm yourself, please, for the love of God, just just look up a design. I didn't. I was lazy, and I kind of paid the price for it. I also, at some point, tried adding a second layer to it, but it just produces a lot of glow squid spawned in there all the time. So I guess that means I also have a glow squidding farm. I built, like, a top area here for, uh... Iron farm. I'm not sure why I made it a tower, but I did. And it's still, I think, actually the tallest build in the world right now. Over here, we have kind of just a mix of episodes all in one place here. Down here is where my never portal is. And we'll be hanging inside there in a moment, actually. But here, this was where my never portal was originally built, you know, on the ground on normal level. However, that was actually a mistake. I should have had a more proper location for it, but I didn't. And because of that, I needed to find a creative way to make the Never Portal look good. And this is what I came up with. A portal just in the ground. The signage here is also in French because if you watch episode 8, you'll know that this is all part of Voltaire City, which is the capital of the fictional uh, Western European nation of Industria, which is predominantly French speaking. Then there's this building here, which was made to uh, preserve dark oak. That was the reason I gave canonically, and I think it still holds up. It actually looks really nice with shaders. I actually really like this. We're gonna be approaching this behemoth over here. This is the hexagon building. I got the idea of it, actually, I believe? Maybe sometime, I don't know. It's, I've had it in mind for a while now. 
I think maybe since, maybe even as far back as November, because that was when my high school took several kids on a trip to Washington, D.C., me included. And I remember just on that tour, they told us not to snatch any photos of the Pentagon. Guess you got a picture of the Pentagon, boy. But in general, it was just a really nice building, actually, that gave me a lot of inspiration. And because hexagons are better than pentagons, I decided to make a hexagon-shaped building that would be where I store all my farms. This is probably where we're gonna, we're gonna be building a, a new dripstone farm. The interior building is actually not touched all that much. It's still very hollow. Really, this was the most recent farm we made here. This slime farm here is also... This, I remember, I actually died twice making this. But basically, I found a slime farm design and since there were two slime chunks right next to each other, I decided to just do two of them and put them both, both together. This is pretty damn efficient. This is also my sugarcane farm, which I really need to increase the size of and... Actually, I just need to redo this farm in general, because it sucks. It looks good as hell on the outside, though, especially with shaders. Just because it's just this ominous, looming structure. If we go in this direction, you'll see the sheep factory. Which I actually think needs a little bit uh, of an upgrade. When I first built it, I added all these sheep. These are basically all of it. There's some white sheep, and then rainbow sheep, and some black sheep. Yeah, this place was basically just like, okay, I want to do some stuff. I want a sheep or something. I can go here. I've also got a perfect setup for breeding them, too. Over here, we have my general mob farm. This was too big to fit inside the uh, hexagon building. Originally, it was actually supposed to be a, uh, basically a place like, uh, it was, it was supposed to be a water mill. However, that idea ended up falling through, and I said decided to make it look like a big, just giant factory. And really, the main reason I made this place was because I needed more gunpowder. And yeah, it, it, I've got more than enough gunpowder. I'm also going to stop to take just a moment to talk about just the flooring of the general area. Basically, wait, long story short, this is the world basically a thousand years after a nuclear war began. So, 3024. And the ground basically would have never recovered, so it would have just always looked dry like this. Oh and how could I forget to talk about my villagers? These are actually not my original villagers. Those were all killed because of an incident in episode 3. Actually, only three of the vill original villagers are alive. They're inside my iron farm now. I mean, just in general, it would be a good idea if I did start moving these guys out to somewhere more safe. And less primitive. This was supposed to be a villager breeder, not a villager trading area. We'll take a turn to the left, and we'll see this place. This is the marketplace. I've had this, uh, I've had the idea for this place in mind for a while. The poorer part of Volterra City, the slums, as I call it, is basically, it's basically mostly populated by immigrants from Hispanic America. I think, just in general, this is actually pretty nice place. I'd go here to be honest if I lived in this part of town because it has the most color, believe it or not. Oh yeah, even though it's not really Hispanic or whatever, there's golden carrots. This sign is, has uh, golden carrots in French on it. That's how you know it's authentic. This big building here is basically inspired by tenements from New York City in the Gilded Age of the United States. Just buildings where they would huddle in a lot of people and they sucked. The living conditions were really bad. Be glad we don't store people in those anymore. We now give people in the, in the United States much better options. They're still not all that great, but they're better options. We call them apartments. Across from the building here, we have this place, the school. This was one of the only places, this is actually one of the only places in the entire state that has an interior. Classrooms are basically all the same. They're all dry and dreary. With the only real difference being the color of the carpet. In every other room, it'll be either yellow or green. I'm sorry, I just wanted to get a nice shot of the world from above. I just think it looks really nice. Sonic Eater shaders are the best. They're just the best shader pack. If you're wondering what this line is, by the way, basically, the slums are separated from the rich part of the city, the corporates, by a wall. You can already kind of see it in the background. Real quick, we are going to be going over in this direction, because we're going to be showing... I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Ah, here we go. So this one's the only... Fl actually, f this is actually the only truly, like... This one's the only, like, truly flooded parts of my world. This 
is the Wandering Trader Farm. I AFK'd here a lot in Episode 5, and a little bit in, in uh, Episode 8. But in general, I really just don't like AFKing here, so I really don't use this farm that much. Now, we're in the Never. And here... Okay, wow, the shaders make this place look insane. Now, funny story about this Bastion, actually. I cleared it back in Episode 2 via changing my game to Peaceful. And this was my main source of Blackstone for the project in Episode 2. Though, funny story, I was mining out uh, Blackstone bricks from, like, the top of the Bastion. And I was... I forgot that only... It was only, like, two layers stick in some spots. So, unsuspectingly, I was mining Blackstone. And then... I'll play the clip. Shorty of Bastion... <gasps> Huh? Okay. That is how I lost my favorite pickaxe. Favorite because of the name I gave it. The Canadian moneymaker burned alive that day. So here we are at the Never Hub. So the general idea for how I got in and out was like, hmm. I can make it so I had some guys break out a trapped piglin and make it so he got through this way. And this is how I've been getting in and out through the main entrance. I remember I designed the armory room here on a live stream once. This is where I keep my uh, templates because I can't easily clone them for reasons. This is just actually probably my favorite room in the, uh, in the Never base. The idea for the base in Never was that it was supposed to basically be my version of a stronghold. Basically, because, for some reason, because of the way my world generated, strongholds would not naturally generate. This was supposed to be a library using these, uh, chiseled bookshelves. But really, honestly, I, there was no way I was getting that many books at, at the time, really. And this was the most accurate room to, the, uh, normal strongholds. Because I found out the hard way that you couldn't actually go to the end in, uh, in this world, I had to find a new use for the original 12, uh, Eyes of Ender. And this is what I did with them. They're all here now. Also remember I was I just remember I was generally just working on the initial part of the Never Hub while my cousins from uh, California were visiting. I also remember I gave this dude a funny name. Penis Man. I don't know why I named him that. It was nearly a year ago when I did. But I named him that. And now we will be going down the stairs. This was the part that I added on to the Never Hub in episode five. You go all the way down here to where the lava is. And this just goes so hard, holy shit. And this, the idea here was actually to make this a tree museum. Because my idea was that, you know how people are always like, trapping mobs or structures if you're Beppo? Well, I figured, you know what, why don't I make a tree museum? And why don't I put all the trees in there? Every time I would find a tree, I would basically just, I would give it its own spot here. I tried doing that fog glassing here, but because uh, I don't have uh, Optifine, because it sucks. The glass looks kind of weird here, but whatever. However, generally, it's mostly filled in. And this is basically where a lot of these trees are basically on reserve. Oh yeah, this. I remember this part took so long. I don't know why, but I just wanted like, an area of like lava that was like cleared out and had like, a big window showing all the lava. I just wanted that so bad, and you know what? It looks awesome. I'm very glad I did now, but past me would have hated me for doing this. And of course, the main part of episode 5, the Strider Hub itself. I actually don't use these Striders, like, at all. I wanted a new way to get around the Never, because at the time, I didn't have a crafting, craftable Lydra mod, which I do now. But, uh, yeah, that way is gonna make these guys pretty much useless pretty quickly, and you know, you can only go so far with a Strider before eventually, I would, the fungus on a stick runs out, or, or if you basically run out of places, you can actually go efficiently on a strider. At some point, I don't remember when, but this, okay, at some point, I don't remember when, but this dude wandered through my uh, never portal, so it's probably when one of the earlier episodes. He wanders through my never portal, wanders all the way out here, and is now stuck here. And because he's in the never, I decided to name him. The Dutchman. Maybe I should give him a proper home one day. He's been stuck here for a while. Anyway, over here, we have another Never Portal. And this one actually goes to a really 
it's a place that means a lot to me, and it's the other major project in this world. So this place, this is pretty far around, nearly a thousand blocks away from the main base. But basically, this is the ruins. This was what we were building in episode 6, and that and this remains my favorite build actually in the world so far. This build took a long time because firstly, digging this out was a nightmare because of how much dirt I had to mainly remove. Not to mention stone as well, and the mud, dude, oh my god, the mud. The mud took so long to fully get in because of my inefficient ass farm, that it ended up taking me like, I think maybe like 200 days to get this project finished. But basically, this project here is supposed to mem memorialize my first ever Minecraft Superfight base. Which, that world was lost to corruption, If I and if I didn't lose it, I would probably still be playing on it. So this is supposed to be like uh, a recreation of it. It's a bit smaller and, and it's actually not using some of the correct resources. There's like a mangrove rim of wood around there. First of all, it's actually supposed to be down there and made of acacia. But nonetheless, it's the general shape and honestly, I miss, the, uh, I miss this world. So I decided to memorialize it in the form of a ruined base because it was not really finished. In fact, just getting some walls up, that was not far as I ever got. I had ideas, but I never really settled on a specific one. So we'll really never really know how this base would have looked if it was finished. As such, it is being built in a way that makes it look ruined. I feel like this is really the only way I can truly memorialize my old base. And the ruins will be expanded in the future too. There will be more added on to it at a later point. But for now, this is as big as it's going to get. I think maybe we'll finish the slums before doing our project with this, uh, with the ruins. But nonetheless, this is a nice project, and I'm glad I was able to do it. So that's going to be end of the world tour. So what next? Well, I don't remember if I said this at the end of episode 8, but I will be taking a little bit of a break from this world. It hopefully won't last too long, but I will still be taking a break regardless. You guys also might be wondering, will there be a world download? And the answer is yes. In fact, there will be no strings attached. In the description of this video, the world download should be there. It should be completely free. That's right, free. I'm not going to charge a single dime for it. I'm not going to lock it behind Patreon or something like some other YouTubers. <clears throat> so yeah, you can download this world right now in the description below. Anyway, without all out of the way, my name is Walton. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.